going to continue nomenclature today. But for this video, we're going to be focusing on some different functional groups than alkenes, alkynes, and alkanes. So before we go through this, in the first couple of videos, we talked about how alkenes and alkynes had higher priority than alkanes. And of course, alkanes have the same priority as halides, right? But for the rest of the video, I want to set up in the beginning a priority list. Okay, so that's what you're looking at right now. We have the, the highest priority at top, which is the carboxylic acid functional group. And we will go down our list all the way down to the alkanes that we have already talked about. Okay, and what we're going to do is after we list the priorities, then we will go through how to name each of these functional groups. Uh, anything I wanted to say? Oh yes, so the reason why I'm giving you these priorities is because uh, the ranking and priority is going to help you decide who the parent is in a structure. So what's the parent chain? Remember, when you're picking a parent chain, you want to pick the longest chain possible that has the highest priority functional group. And usually, if you have multiple of the same functional group, you want to get as many of those high priority functional groups as possible. Okay, so at the top of our priority is carboxylic acids. So those are the highest priority. If you ever have a carboxylic acid in your compound, that carboxylic acid will be part of the parent chain. Next in priority are the anhydrides. Okay, and so here's what an anhydride functional group looks like. Next is esters, and then we have acyl halides. Now this doesn't have to be a bromine, right? Here we say it's an acyl halide, so this could be any halogen. It could be a chlorine or a, a fluorine, can be any of those. Next are the amide functional group, and then nitriles functional group, okay, and then we've got aldehydes and ketones, alcohols, amines, ethers, and then of course the al Alkenes and alkynes that we talked about already, and the alkyl halides. Then we have a nitro functional group, which we won't really talk about. And then, of course, the very last would be alkanes. Okay. So these all have pretty much the same, they're all the bottom three. So if you have any of those, you're not going to be, if any of these, well, actually, how should I say this? Well, I should, well let's do some practice. What we're going to do in these videos is we're going to probably cut them into small segments so that these videos aren't too long. And we're going to start at the bottom. So we've already covered alkanes. We're not going to talk about nitros. We've already talked about alkyl halides and alkenes and alkynes. So we're just going to keep working our way up. And we aren't going to cover all of these, but we will cover most of them. So for example, alcohols. Well, alcohols, of course, have higher priority than alkanes, alkyl halides, and alkenes or alkynes. All right. And alcohols are named by dropping the E on the end of the parent name and replacing with O-L. 
Okay, so for example, this molecule right here is one, two, three, four, five carbons long. So this would be pentane. But if we had an alcohol group on this fifth carbon, for example, then it wouldn't be called pentane, remember, because we're going to drop the E and add OL. So it would be called pentanol. Now you also need to tell the reader where our alcohol is, and it's at carbon number one. And so we could either write the one in front of the word pentanol like this, or we could write the letter right in front of the suffix that denotes that we have an alcohol. like this. So either way, we can name it that way. Here's another example where we have the molecule ethane. And if you have ethane but you have an alcohol here, then you would call that ethanol. Now we don't need to specify that the alcohol in this case is on carbon number one, because if the OH was here, it would be carbon number one. If the OH was here, it would all, then that would be carbon number one. So in this case, we don't need to specify that. The number designating the placement of the OH group is placed directly in front of the all suffix. And like I said, that's, that's how I prefer to do it, but sometimes people will write it the first way I wrote it. So for example, heptan 2 all. I know that the alcohol group is on carbon number 2, and so sometimes we put the 2 in front. Personal preference. Now this is interesting because we have 2-butene-3-all. Now the 2 here represents the placement of the double bond, and the 3 represents the placement of the alcohol. You could have also written this like this, but2-ene-3-all. And I like doing this because it's easier to follow. I see that this 2 is directly in front of the suffix that tells me I have a double bond, and the 3 is right in front of the suffix that tells me I have an alcohol. So I know this two represents the double bond placement and this three represents the alcohol placement. Alrighty. So when the OH group is not part of the parent, meaning it's a substituent, it's called a hydroxy, or I'm sorry, a hydroxyl group. This is just kind of something that you can know. Uh, a molecule with two hydroxyl groups have the suffix diol. They can also be called glycols. In biology class, sometimes you'll hear about glycols. And so that's kind of a more common name. If the two hydroxyl groups are on the same carbon, like this example right here, see how my two uh, OH groups are on the same carbon? Then they're referred to as geminal diols. And if they're on adjacent carbons, like these two are, so here's one, here's the other one, they're on neighboring carbons, they're called vicinal diols.